Hello, this is Father David. Here with day 33 of the Nativity Fast 2023, with our second of the catch-up uh, videos for today, is that uh, we are continuing on through the Gospel according to St. Luke. Uh, this was the Gospel from yesterday's liturgy. Um, Luke chapter 14, verses 16 through 24. Jesus said to him, and this him is uh, one of the guests um, at that banquet that, that Jesus was at in yesterday's video. Um, he heard these things. He said to him, blessed is he who will eat the bread in the kingdom of God. Um, and Jesus said to him, a man gave a great supper and invited many. And he sent his servant at supper time to tell those who were invited, behold, everything is made ready for you. Come. And one and all, they began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field and I am forced to go and see it. I beg you to excuse me for being called away. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am just going to examine them. I beg you, excuse me for being called away. Another said, I have just taken a wife and therefore I cannot come. And the servant came and told his master these things, and the master of the house was angry and said to his servants, go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor, the afflicted, the maimed, and the blind. And the servant said, my Lord, it has been done as you commanded, and yet there is more room. Then the master said to his servant, go out to the highways and the hedges and urge them to come in so that my house may be filled. For I say to you that not one of these men who were invited shall taste of my supper. Now, this is a uh, rather familiar parable of the Lord. What we have here is, again, the Lord speaking to the Pharisees who were seated there at the banquet. These were the men, as we said in yesterday's video, who were jockeying for the uh, upper seat, yeah. who were looking to uh, for status, and that they prized this, they loved this. And he was looking to take them down a notch in a way that both they truly needed, that was good for them, and it wasn't out of Christ's ego that he was looking to do this. Um, but he began to talk about these people that make excuses. One of them says, I bought a field. I'm forced to go and see it. I beg you to excuse me for being called away. This was common practice with agriculture. You had to go out and if you've bought a field, you have to examine it to make sure that it's not, there's no cheating involved that you haven't bought, you know, what we might consider a lemon, you know, of a car, um, to be able to, to, to say, you know, if, if you decide to go back to the person, you say, you, you sold me a, a, a field that's gone sterile or fallow. Yeah, I, I'm going to give this back. You've cheated me. It's a very important financial decision. Uh, so he's not just trying to blow him off. He's saying, this is a big deal. This is a big business venture. It's a very important call. It's a very important conference. I can't just blow it off. Another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to examine them. I beg you, excuse me for being called away. Same thing. Back then, your your oxen were your, uh, your major capital investment. If you're a, a trucking company, these are your trucks. If they, if you are, you know, a, a, a some kind of, you know, you're involved on in IT. These are your servers. These are your, your machines. These This is what you're using in order to make your livelihood. They need to be in good working order. They need to be free of any kind of viruses or sickness or anything. I beg you, excuse me. Another said, I've not taken, I have taken a wife and therefore I cannot come. This, of course, in reference to the common custom of a honeymoon, which at that point, I mean, it was expected you literally spent the whole lunar cycle, the honeymoon, with your wife, being intimate and hopefully right away having some children to show for it. So, uh, you know, if this was going to be at supper time later on in the evening, he was saying, um, 
my wife and I are going to be occupied at that point. So I beg you, I'm not going to be available. And, um, you know, this is a responsibility to ourselves and to our family to produce children. And so the servant goes back and tells them, the master of the house angrily says, go to the lanes and the streets of the city, the highways and the hedges, the poor, the afflicted, the maimed and the blind. Go out to the highways and the hedges, the very edges of society and urge them to come in so that my house may be filled. Why is he doing this? You know, it might be that uh, people will say, you know, this is, this is because Christ has no standards whatsoever. He just goes out and says, if you have a pulse and you are a human being, I love you, I want you, come. Come into the kingdom of heaven, regardless of anything you've done, regardless of anything that you've ever said, or regardless of any kind of thing in your past. Now, the beautiful thing about the gospel is that's actually true. That invitation is open to anybody with a pulse. And regardless of the past, regardless of the condition, the door is never closed to anyone. Now, there will be some who, when they see Christ's lordship, they reject this and they walk back out the door. There will be those who are so wild in their lives that if God were ever to say to them, this is the way you should walk. And let's bear in mind that he's telling this to respectful people in society here. It's not the the druggie who won't act right in church, right? It isn't the uh, the person whose kid is special needs and continually cries out and you just wish, you know, get him out of here because they don't know how to act right, you know? The house of God isn't for you. It's for decent people. This is, you know, the gospel is for everyone. But from the homeless out on the street, to the white-collar parish council member who uh, sits in the front, you know, or stands in the front of the nave, or the front pew, if that's what your church does. Um, the gospel is for all of these people. And Christ's lordship comes to everyone. Christ's commandments comes to everyone to guide us and direct us in the way that we should go. But the thing about those people in the highways and the hedges is that there was a simplicity to their lives. They didn't have all of these uh, other commitments. They didn't have, like the Pharisees did, a, uh, a, a reputation to consider. I mean, follow Christ. I mean, what would people think in the Sanhedrin? You know, uh, They didn't have the cushy retirements. I mean, truly, this was uh, a respected job that they could retire with ease and to be taken care of, of course they would be, you know. They had a lot to lose. And St. Paul eventually would, after he took the plunge, after his conversion, he would talk about everything that he gave up. And it was considerable. Christ is saying, you know, these people don't have anything to lose. They're simple. When you come and you tell them that the kingdom of God is for them, in a sense, they don't have anything that they could put above that. And so now the challenge is that those that, that have a great deal, that have these uh, commitments and requirements, it isn't that they are shut out of the kingdom of God. You know, notice that Christ, when he talks to the rich young ruler, doesn't say, boy, those rich young rulers, it's just good that he walked away because they're not welcome in the kingdom of God. No. He said, how hard is it for those who have riches and not only, you know, maybe financial riches, but social riches. If you are someone that it would be highly inconvenient for you to follow this very odd carpenter from 2,000 years ago that got, you know, impaled on a piece of wood that has a weird, uh, strange, unpopular uh, economic uh, push towards the poor or a very strict, narrow sexual ethic that the society doesn't understand. You know, to follow that man, it may be very difficult. 
But this is what Christ is really telling us, to set nothing before his love, as the phrase goes, to set nothing higher than his love. And so may we take this to heart as the invitation is for us as well. But let us not, in so far as is within our power, to put anything before our coming before him, our receiving his great gift of his body and blood, of his forgiveness of sins, of his eternal life, to taste of his banquet in the Eucharist and to receive his life. May nothing else be put before that, that we welcome as we are to his banquet, would therefore receive that which he went to such great pains to put before us. So may the Lord God bless you. Lord willing, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.